First mentioned and seen in the 2017 box set and reference book Star Wars The Rebel Files, the Onager class Star Destroyer in Star Wars canon, nicknamed the Imperial Siegebreaker, was a type of Star Destroyer but classed heavily towards being a superweapon. The vessel's early appearance was introduced in 19 BBY following the Clone Wars, and the Galactic Empire required a warship that could significantly reduce costly planetary sieges. The Onager class testbed was initially used to obliterate entire separatist strongholds, resisting Imperial rule using a single weapon known as an orbital bombardment particle cannon. However, it was scarcely deployed for sensitive missions by the Empire, which made the vessel a rather secretive superweapon, as the Rebellion would come to categorise it. The Onager class testbed was in its experimental phase in the early years of the Empire, and was developed alongside the Death Star project. In 5 BBY, a more refined vessel called the Onager class Star Destroyer was deployed to destroy entire rebel entrenchments, and by then was using new technology. By 0 BBY, during the Galactic Civil War, there were four Onager class vessels in operational existence, and were named the Rakel, the Cataclysm, the Sunder, and the original vessel, the Onager Testbed. The reason for the superweapons categorization was its two heavy composite beam turbo lasers, powered by kyber crystals in a similar way to the Death Star's giant super laser. However, kyber crystals were difficult to source, and the Empire were plundering every possible known location they could target. This led rebel intelligence to believe the Empire were using crystals for more than simply a power plant to help worlds greatly improve their energy production. Its primary role and design was orbital bombardment for the Imperial Navy, mainly deployed at long range to target planetary shields, and bringing an end to an Imperial siege blockade of a resisting world or faction. Its other role was naval warfare, deployed at exceptional long range, as its composite beam turbo lasers could engage capital ships, causing extensive damage or even destroy vessels entirely. Manufactured by Rathana Heavy Engineering via a licensed contract by Kuat Drive Yards, it was a cruiser class star destroyer at a length of 1,288 metres long, and it was just over 300 metres shorter than an Imperial class star destroyer. Its dorsal design of its stern was still very similar. However, its obvious difference towards the bow in appearance was its two-pronged hammerhead design to its structure, with two composite beam turbo lasers situated throughout the middle section of the vessel. Another notable difference was its conning tower and superstructure, which made the Imperial vessel a unique design. In a similar way, the Onager class had a ridge that spanned both the port and starboard sides of the vessel. Costing 376,500,000 credits to the Imperial Navy, it was a relatively inexpensive ship to build considering the potential benefit that a single Onager could achieve. Compared to the cost of an Imperial class ST at a cost of 150 million credits, the investment would have been an easy decision for naval intelligence to sanction. At the beginning of the Empire's rise to power, the secretive Death Star project was the favoured venture as part of the Tarkin Doctrine by the Imperial elite despite many reservations inside the Imperial Navy and the Imperial Army, as critics saw the moon-sized battle station as a huge drain on resources to a single project. But as the experimental Onager class testbed gained a favoured reputation for its orbital bombardment capabilities, the slow development of the vessel in terms of its two composite beam turbo laser technology, powered by kyber crystals, progressed into a complete ship design. When deployed by the Imperial Navy, the Onager required escort vessels, usually other Star Destroyer classes, for protection due to its primary role. So let's take a look at the Onager's armaments, which of course consisted primarily of two super heavy composite beam turbo lasers, drawing upon immense power from the solar ionization reactor and harnessing kyber crystals housed inside the engineering section to focus and direct energy into a powerful beam, but much like the design of the Death Star super laser. However, the 600 meter long trench in which the massive turbo laser was fired consisted of a series of galvan coils Galvan coils were a type of technology used in energy-based weapons. The coils served to focus the energy released into a coherent beam of focused plasma capable of causing damage to a target. Such coils were used in medium laser cannons used by X-Wing starfighters, but also in single-barrel turbo laser turrets and some types of blaster pistols. The technology channeled the energy beam so tightly that it focused the plasma into a torpedo form which was strong enough to pierce through almost any type of material or energy field. The kyber crystal, in the Onager's case, 
enhance the power beyond the normal turbo laser. This technology and design also allowed it to fire extreme long distances, making the Onager like a sniper type of warship. The two composite beam turbo lasers would continuously alternate its beams to smash through its target. This type of design was later used in further ship designs, well beyond the Empire's reign. Other armaments also included six twin heavy turbo laser batteries, 24 heavy turbo laser batteries, and 20 point defense laser cannons, ensuring the Onager class was capable of defending itself against other powerful enemy warships, although it did have a lack of point defense laser cannons to defend itself against starfighter attacks. The Onager class's shield and hull rating measurements are not classified. I would expect it safe to assume that the vessel's SBD and RU ratings would match, if not better, the Imperial class Star Destroyer's ratings due to the ship's power output capability. It held two deflector shield generator domes, but also held additional frontal deflector shields to protect the main armament firepower. There was a heavy concentration of the Onager's power, which diverted over 50% of its deflector shield capability to the frontal globes. However, this left the back and the sides of the Onager class more exposed, leaving the engines and the superstructure vulnerable. When designed and reviewed, it was considered an acceptable risk in order to divert the power required to defend its primary asset. The propulsion systems consisted of five sublight engines at the stern of the vessel, however three were larger than the remaining two between them, again a similar arrangement to the Imperial Victory class SD. The Onager's hyperdrive primary class rating was favourable at 1.75 and compared well against much larger classes of Star Destroyer, which generally held a rating of 2. The complement held on board consisted of three TIE Fighter squadrons totalling 36 TIE Fighters and six Lambda class shuttles. These were deployed from either of its two hangar bays, located to the rear of each of the two frontal prongs as shown here. The ship was operated by a crew totalling 25,200 personnel and consisted of officers, pilots and enlisted, and also held 240 troopers. It could maintain consumables for the crew for up to one year. Most of the internal compartments and sections, especially towards the stern, would largely resemble many of the Star Destroyer variants, however the obvious difference to the frontal layout, considering the placement of its hangar bays and the gunnery placements and supporting decks. The conning tower at first glance, which houses the bridge inside the command section and system controls, was indeed smaller than the usual standard designs of other cruisers and star destroyers. Due to the obvious visual design differences, it seems to suggest the usual conning tower design was not fit for purpose, due to how the deflector shields were required to protect the frontal armaments. The Onager was also equipped with advanced targeting and extreme range sensor arrays, as well as a navigation computer. Matching the design of other Imperial warships, a solar ionized reactor was located in the ventral part of the hull. In the aftermath of the Battle of Endor in 4 ABY, the scattered Imperial Warlord remnants saw the Onager as a powerful instrument to regain power in the Galactic Civil War. However, unfortunately they were never used as part of a coordinated effort. By the age of the First Order, the Empire's successor movement used the technology as inspiration from the Onager to build the Siege Dreadnought known as the Mandator 4 class. That's all for today. For more Imperial Explained videos, please give a like and subscribe. Thank you for watching, and as always, long live the Empire!